Passive radiators. Passive radiators take the place of a port. They are tuned just like a port is tuned. Um, uh, there's a lot of similarities. So the same thing goes with uh, somebody the other day where they, they were like, see, and that's where it gets into weird stuff. Like when people start talking about sixth order bandpass, fourth order bandpass, two ports and all this kind of bullshit. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Because if you do what the fuck you're doing, you would just do a simple ported box. If you don't have room for a ported box, that's what a passive radiator is good for. Um, there's no way that you could tune to like 34 hertz with this without the the butthole hanging way the fuck out there. So that's where a passive radiator is good for. So now to tune uh, passive, basically you have to, it, it helps. I don't say you have to. It helps to know what the subwoofer wants as far as parameters. Now, as far as parameters go for most woofers, uh, they're pretty much all about the same. So in this case, a 10 inch, 10 inch is good from about 0.85 cubic feet to about no more than about 1.5 cubic feet. And you say, well, Patrick, Sundown says blah, 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 and so-and-so says so-and-so, so. That's too big. Remember, you should go by the VAS. The VAS is the largest uh, airspace required to reach FS. FS is the lowest frequency the woofer can usably play, okay? So the box recommendation should be based on or around the VAS of the woofer, the compliance. So what I like to do when I'm tuning a passive is you put the woofer in where it's supposed to go. And then the other one, the passive, which in this case is this little floppy butthole. It's a little spacer ring for the grills. I like to mount it with the, the back out, okay? Because that's the side that I'm gonna add mass to. So now in this case, we can't really put it face down without having some movement problems. It's gonna hit the table. So if it has a grill, do it. If you can put little feet on it, do it. So, and then basically what you're gonna left with is this. So and it, you, you only need like four screws. It doesn't need to be super tight. And basically what you're gonna do is play uh, the tuning frequency that you already know that you're gonna do. Now, typically for daily use, you only wanna tune no lower than about 32 hertz, typically no higher than about 36 hertz. Uh, and I don't, I don't even recommend 36 hertz unless uh, the guy likes, you know, like some older guys like country music and they like a lot of kick drum. That's where I would do like 36, maybe 40 hertz, maybe. Uh, and that's only after playing around with it. So, um, but what you do is you insert the tone that you wanna play and then you're gonna observe the, the frequency of the subwoofer, or the, the passive, the how, how much it moves. And basically, you just add mass until it moves its greatest. There's other ways to tell, like I've shown you, where you're, um, you use current to tell where your FS is. If you have one of those fancy Steve Mead meters, then that's another way to tell where, you're at, where the, the tuning frequency is um, and uh, how the subwoofer is uh, basically reproducing it. So, but that, that's it, that's, you just keep adding mass until it starts to get really extra floppy. It, you'll see a peak and then you can uh, add more and, and it won't be as whatever you want. Again, you're only playing one tone while the, uh, the amplifier and the subwoofer is playing, right? So anything outside of that tone, it will react less than that tone because that's what you want. You want maximum excursion at that tone. That's how you tune the pass radiator. So what's gonna happen is at whatever, let's say you tune to 33 Hertz. At 33 Hertz, this will move more than the initial cone, than the active cone. And that's what you want. So that's tuning it to that frequency. And the same thing happens when you use a port. The port actually has more sound at the tuning frequency than the woofer, right? It takes over from that. And you'd learn all that in the loudspeaker cookbook. So, but uh, let me grab some passes real quick and show you those off to you. So these were part of the buyout from Concept. Concept was, act, I should say Concept was acted as an OEM for several brands, including Avalon Soundworks. They're in California, they're in Lancaster. So, and this product was theirs. It was called the PR15. And it's just a um, cork, tall cork uh, gasket, a good paper cone. This is basically the same cone that uh, RE Audio and a dyer used for many, many years. They just used a convex bubble cap. 
Um, and then it uses a stamped steel frame. That's it. So you can see inside there, it's actually empty. And this is where you can attach. Now for those guys, I don't think they needed anything. So this is this was tuned the way it was. In fact, it looks like they used actually a really a real voice coil, which may have helped uh, to add to the mass that you needed to. So these guys are really affordable. They come in this really cool box, which reminds me of like Orion days from the 90s. Um, but this one, I think we're gonna do for your choice, $40. No, let's do 40 bucks. 40 bucks shipped on the 12 and then 45 on the 15. How's that? So $45 shipped, and then you figure out how to add your mass. And there are several ways to do it. You can do it with epoxy. The best way in this case is actually to do it front load. Um, especially you can cut this off and then you can actually add it underneath the cap if you want and then add another bigger cap. There's all kinds of ways you can do it. Um, in this case for tuning this guy, what I would do is just uh, mount it in regular and then start adding either silly putty. That's what I for didn't, I forgot what the name was the other day, silly putty or clay. Uh, to this part or even around this part to figure out where the mass is going to be, what how, what mass is going to be required uh, to tune your, uh, uh, your box, your enclosure, okay? So once you find how much mass you, you know, like let's say you got it at maximum excursion at say 34 hertz and you're like, okay, good, now it's tuned for 34 hertz. Then what you do is you remove that clay or silly putty. And that's why you use clay or silly putty so you can remove it and you weigh it on a little weed scale, right? Because you want to measure it in grams. That's what science is all about, grams. Mass is what they call it. Um, so you measure that in grams. Uh, if you want to measure in ounces, you fucking can, whatever. So you measure the grams and let's say it's, uh, you know, 80 grams, something like that. So then what you want to do is create a mass. And if you want to be super accurate, you can also weigh the epoxy. And then you want to use epoxy or, or even just fasteners or something to fasten it either to the front side or the back side of the passive radiator. If you want to use that uh, silly putty that you just used or the, the uh, um, clay, you can use that. You just want to make sure you use epoxy or some sort of adhesive to encapsulate it and, and lock it in place. So now when you look at the, I'll put a link to it. It's the old VMP, which is variable mass passive radiator. Uh, designed by Tilo Stompler of TC Sounds and also of Audio Pulse. Um, that um, he he used a threaded rod, and when I first got started, I made the same. I was like, oh, I just, just copy what he's going to do. Uh, and so what he did was he put a threaded rod in the middle. You can use cardboard or whatever to hold it in place. And so then you end up with this uh, threaded rod sticking out, and then you can add washers and then a big uh, a nut to, to uh, secure it in place. And that's how you can add the mass. And it's good because it's um, it's modular. It's good for testing, but also it helps you just sort of figure out how heavy it's going to be. Um, I found out later that's actually a very expensive way to do it because those parts are kind of expensive. Uh, they're also expensive to ship, and so that's not a great way to do it. So I think this is actually the best way to do it, uh, which is you find some rocks or epoxy or fishing weights or whatever you want to do to add the mass to it. And then once you have the mass right and the enclosure is ready to go, then... You just add it and then whatever cosmetics you want to add, that's it. So uh, 45 shipped, 40 shipped, here's the 12. So looks pretty much the same. And then look at that, the DHD Power Cruiser uh, box turned inside out. Uh, and then I think it was repurposed. And, yeah. Oh, no, that's the concept version. The CSE 126N, whatever that means. And then this one was just for Avalon. So these were all on one pallet and... We just got a hold of them and I was like, let's keep these. They're like, oh, they're just junk. There's no magnets on the back. I'm like, no, 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 it's a passive. So anyways, the, that's my tips for how to tune a passive radiator. Uh, if you have any other insights that I'm missing, uh, please let me know and uh, leave it in the comments. Love you.